need to hit that mesh line and physically sever it and maybe short it because when I'm done, it's very sensitive to the area. We have two active layers. We have a ground or a VCC plane on metal three, and then we have an active line from uh, metal two, which is the actual bus line, and then we have the, the fingertips of the mesh that I cut out. And these fingertips are alive. Some of them are still alive. It just depends at what point in the mesh they're, uh, they're at. So here, this is our target. Jeff, what's the time check? Anybody? 15 minutes. Okay, I gotta hurry. We're not even half done. Uh, yes? Is there any advantage to the manufacturer reordering those bus lines? I, I wish they would. Yeah, absolutely. That would have thrown a big bone into this. Or even swap some of the opcodes, do something. But it's what, that would have been good. You probably still would have seen it. If it's like the old days, um, you'd probably see it here. Um, you'd most likely notice here, like maybe they're in order. This was the first thing I thought when I saw the 66PE. I wondered, did they swap the opcodes or anything? And they didn't. Um, and so why they didn't, I have no idea. It'd be a good question for them. That's just obfuscation. Anyway, right? It is. It, 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 exactly, exactly. Well, they should care because security is built in layers. Obscurity is part of, part of a layering system of, of, to build a secure device. Um, but like Joe said, you know, once it's figured out, it, that, that would just add some time. Um, the biggest thing for me had nothing to do with them so much. It was more me in, in using this machine to do, make it do what I wanted it to do. Learning techniques on the fib like cutting metal tracks without shorting the metal to the lower metal layer is very complicated. It's very hard. Um, so here's that image. Uh, again, let's get rid of that. We'll go to this one. If my computer works. Okay. So now we know where we want to get to. So what do I do next? I use this machine as a tool. This machine, I can say, I, uh, the substrate's not straight. I want you to align on this wire going, you know, to, from the left to the right across the, across the chip. Line, align yourself to this. Align on X. Um, I do that, and the, and the machine will adjust the stage very accurately to get me straight. Once I'm straight or fairly straight, I can draw a bot. I can zoom in. Um, I, I do a lot of editing on the first chip, I, I, and so wh when I'm ready, I, I then can find my, where I need to get to in the chip. On, on the lower, on the bottom of the chip, I zoom in, I mark it, and then I can walk the track from the bottom of the chip to the top of the track, or to the top of the chip. Then I can make. I, this is not one image. These are these are two different sets of images, uh, from the top to the bottom. Um, here, let me turn some stuff off here. So you can see here. So using the fib, I basically used the xenon difluoride gas, and I and I walked. This is probably like 5,000 magnification or something like this. Not too much, just enough to see metal three and metal four. That's all we care about. So the actual core on most of these chips, except the TPM chip, was at 340 microns from the, 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 the corner of, this, of, this gr of the ground pa uh, pad. So you just go to the bottom of the die, go to the corner of the bond pad, type in on the uh, stage controller of the fib. I want you to move over X on X axis, move over 340 microns, and boom, goes right to this area. You get to this area, whoops, hold on. You get to this area and you, you dig down. You dig down basically right here. That's where 340 microns puts you. So that, then the problem comes, well, my bridge can't just be here. I need to bridge like 60 wires. So I need to physically be able to remove 60 different conductors from this mesh. And I have no idea where they really go. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna, it's only four circuits, right? There were 20 circuits total, but, there, but here we're in the same sector. We're in sector three, so we really only have to worry about jumping four conductor, four conductors. <laughs> so um, I'm still a little nervous, guys. <laughs> anyway, um, so the four purple tracks, I have no idea today, today why I called them 28, 29, 30, and 31, but for some reason they ended up being 28, 29, 30, and 31. The four purple tracks are right over, the, the, are, these, are these guys right here. So these are my four purple tracks over the core. Doesn't matter if it's the TPM chip, doesn't matter if it's the Xbox 360. The, um, something I skipped in the beginning too, this is used for conditional access pay TV, uh, GSM SIM cards, um, medical uh, uh, ID cards, things like this. this. This processor is trusted and certified at the highest levels of, of uh, common criteria, EAL, Visa, all this stuff. Um, so anyway, so the, this is 28, 29, 30, 31. 32 and 33 are taboo. We never touch them. We always will leave them alone. Um, I need to speed up here. I'm not going to get done because I want to show you guys some bus runs too. 
Um, so we, we basically build this bridge map. So this is what I call a bridge map. I do this once per chip. It takes me, it takes me about an hour to do the imaging and everything and then about another hour to do the photoshopping. So these are like five or six images from the top of the chip, five or six images from the bottom of the chip. So this is the bottom, this is the top. The top is just a loop back to the bottom. The active, the driving and receiving sides of these conductors are at the bottom of the chip. So we don't even care about the top of the chip. We care about here. But, but the med connections are in like towards, are up here. So they know if I was to cut, if the med connected here and I cut here and these lines go dead, the med wouldn't have the signals here anymore because they'd be inactive signals at that point. So here's my bridge map that I made. This is, this is the actual bridge map for the Xbox 360 controller. Um, let me zoom in more. So I needed to, I needed to touch D's, D2 by itself. So I needed, to come a, I needed to come over into here. So I changed my mapping and I needed to open up tube six, uh, 18, 19, and 20. To do so, I had to bridge 16, 15, and 14 over to like 57, 58, 61, and 59. Um, and so like anything else that I've showed you today, the images don't lie. You do your math, you do your groundwork, and at the end of the day, one, like in my case, doing the groundwork on 166 proved to take down the whole entire family. And now it's always a question of where's the core, that's it. Um, wherever the, as soon as I find the core, isolate it, lo you know, locate it, determine what sector it's in, and do, the, do this bridge map, and then we're, we're in town. Locate the y-axis of where, it, where it's located, drill down, find a reference, and, um, and start digging out. Once you're dug out, sit on the bus, in, in, introduce a momentary fault, and you know, find a nice loop that does like a move C. Do you guys use 8051? So you can do like a move C. Infineon has a common piece of code that does a move C that'll dump its entire 64K uh, mapped of memory. It includes system ROM and some of the user ROM. Um, and it's in every 66, it's standard. I don't know wh why they keep it today, but you know, they do. So anyway, here's our bridging map. Um, you can see that this line here went to this line. And so you can see what I've done. I, I drew, let me turn them all on. I'm not sure which color that was. Figures it's green. <laughs> so green, you can see green, because he went to him, and then she went to her, and so forth. And so to make it, I'm, you know, I'm following this line to the bottom. And so if we look, let me turn these off. It's not rocket science. I mean, you know, break everything down into the smallest principles and, and put it together. And so this is a mosaic on the bottom stitched together, mosaic on the top stitched together, lined them up in Photoshop, put them together as, a, as, a, as again a mosaic, and then started drawing. And, and this is, this is the, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not rocket science. Anybody have questions? Okay, so, so we made this beautiful map. Now we know if I want to open up tube 28, what do I need to cut? I need to cut, I need, to, well I need, I'm going to cut out tube 28 for example. So that means that I need to somehow make it, I need to bypass the purple line. Because the purple line right here, if I cut tube 28, I broke the mesh. So we need to go from this one, from this point here, over to this point. But remember I need to do more than that. So I end up going from tube 16, which is out of view, all the, all the way as far as tube 61. And you can see tube 61 is right here. Tubes, uh, it's, a, it's a purple, uh, blue line, sorry. And so, at the end of the day, when this mesh map is done, anywhere within the map I need to get, I need to, get to, I can, I can just look it up and say, okay, well that, to, get to open that wire or two wires, I need to, you know, bypass, you know, bridge from A to B to C or A to B. Okay. So now you guys are like, well, how does he find the core? Because it's, you know, it's in the, you know, optically, optically we see where the core is. But I need to find it in the fib now because it's not that easy. And so here we take, <clears throat> we take the TPM chip and basically um, it was, it was 1,472 uh, microns up, uh, 340 microns over. I'm sorry, this isn't the TPM. This is the one that had the RSA crypto engine in it, the M1536. So you can see what I've done here. This chip is dead. I use this chip for experimental purposes. This is why I, I, I buy these chips on the Chinese market. Um, you know, I need to experiment with them and stuff. And so here I basically dug through the mesh, not caring, and I've, then I've dug out metal, metal three, not